Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I'll show you how I will capture the moon with this small affordable telescope that I bought from Timu at about 50 euros and my Sony A7C camera. We have a 420-800mm telescope from f8 to f16. Everything is manual, you extend the telescope to zoom and you have also a focusing ring here. Now we'll center the moon and start the 4K video capture. We are capturing the moon with a zoom telescope, with an 800mm zoom telescope that I bought from Timu and my Sony A7C full frame camera. We are currently at 800mm f16. We are capturing the moon with a 4K video. We finished capturing the moon in 4K and now we'll take also a short plan with the intervalometer from the camera of let's say 200 or 300 images that we can use after and stack them in, in dedicated stacking software. If you are imaging the moon without the equatorial mount or altazimuth mount that will be able to track the moon while imaging, you'll uh, have to take shorter videos in order not to have problems while stacking. In this uh, test I said to get more frames and I had a video about 3 minutes length. I did have issues when I tried to stack the video and artifacts. So in order to get the best results possible, I recommend you to take a shorter video, maybe like one minute, when you are uh, capturing the moon without having a star tracker or a mount with uh, your telescope or a super telephoto lens. If you are using a mount, then you'll be able to take longer videos and don't have problems stacking. Now, let me show you the images with artifacts that I had when I tried to stack the 3 minutes video. And because of this, I decided to use the full resolution photos that I took as backup and selected about 200 images and imported them in AutoStacker. I decided to use here the full resolution images and selected 200 photos that I dropped here in the software called PIP. This is a free software that I do recommend you to download and use. Very useful for lunar, solar and planetary imaging. Uh, it can also make uh, video files from the images that you use. And with some cameras you might have problems with the videos or images, uh, dropping them directly in AutoStacker. So I decided to use here PIP and select all the raw frames, drop them here. And I made an AVI video that uh, I used for auto stacker to stack to stack the moon so you can see here you have different options you can also select solar lunar full disk this will uh, give you a preset to center the moon in your image and also to crop if you want so we have also the different options to select the directory that you want and here the output format avi or ser I just went with uh, AVI this time and after that I went to processing, start processing and PIP starting to process the images and transform them into an AVI file. After PIP finished the video I opened AutoStacker and dropped the video here in the AutoStacker window. After that I uh, clicked on analyze and AutoStacker started to analyze the video and the frames. We have uh, 200 frames and now AutoStacker finished the process and we can select here how many frames or percentage we want to stack. In this case I decided to go with 10 uh, percentage of the frames. This means 20 frames only to be able to have a sharp image. And then I had also to place AP grid aligning points. This situation I think is best to select manual and select just a few images because we use the tripod and the moon moved across the sky. And I also captured the moon in daytime. So I've decided to select manual draw and I selected just a few alignment points, I believe uh, three. And then I went and press stack. And from this is very simple, you need to wait until the auto stackers will stack the image. I selected sharpen in row 70%. This will give you another file that is sharpened. And basically you can already use that file. Or you can even sharpen it more in different programs. 
after this I decided to use the sharpened image directly from AutoStacker in PixInsight and I did use the RCS Oblix Terminator to sharpen the image even more. And let's see the results that I was able to obtain by using Blur Exterminator to be able to sharpen even better the moon by just one click. You can do this and sharpen the moon also in other programs like Photoshop. But having Blur Exterminator and PixInsight, I just decided to drop it here and look on the difference before and after. We can see it's a noticeable difference. And after uh, Using Blur Exterminator, I decided to go in Photoshop and do some final adjustments and sharpen it even more to get the best results possible from the data that I was able to collect. Let's see now the results in PixInsight. Here we have the stack image of the moon captured with the zoom telescope in daytime. And look at these details. Let's uh, zoom in and check a little bit. Look, Copernicus crater, Sinusiridum. Even if we just use a tripod and only 200 images, and we stacked only 20 images, we were still able to get a very nice result of the moon. After this, I processed the image more in Photoshop, and we had this result. Now, uh, I processed the image a little bit more, and... Uh, from the blue sky, I managed to get a dark background and I managed also to increase the contrast. And we can see here an improvement. The craters and the lunar features are more visible and we have an improved contrast and sharpness on the craters. Look how much detail we have in just a 20 image stack. Now I do want to show you a comparison with the moon that I captured later on, on the Star Adventure 2 I, and where I use also a 2 times Barlow, and I captured also Mars in the same frame. However, here I cropped it, so we'll be able to compare the moons. You can check also that video out on my channel. I photographed the moon with three different telescopes. Now let's compare the moon captured in daytime on a tripod with the moon captured later at night using an equatorial mount and a two times barrel lens. We'll uh, also go image and select synchronize. And here we'll select the image that we want to synchronize. Okay. And now we can zoom in both images in the same time, like this. And here on the right, we have the moon captured with the Star Adventure 2i later on at night. And on the left, we have the moon captured in daytime. And I could sharpen a little bit more also the image with the two times Barlow, uh, like this one. You can see this is more sharpened than the one in the right. However, we can definitely see better contrast. And if I would sharpen this image more, it will reveal more details than the left one. On the second image, maybe you can see here we have a little bit blurry this part, blurring this part of the moon because I've used the two times Barlow lens and I wanted to fit Mars in the frame. So I went with the moon more in the corner. If I would have uh, just centered the moon, this would not have happened. And we would have the same sharpness across the frame. And also, if you are interested in buying this affordable telescope from Timu, affiliate links are available in the video description. I think this is actually the best affordable telescope that, that I ever bought. I want to give big thanks to all the channel members that are supporting the channel. And if you want to support the channel also, hit that join button and you'll be able to download also master photography data, including data captured with this small telescope. Well, this is all for today and I'll see you in the next video. Clear sky, everyone.